Hi everyone, in this short series we're going to look at Poisson disk sampling, which is a technique for generating tightly packed points which are all some minimum distance away from one another. We'll also expand on this to support points of different sizes. This can be used, for example, to procedurally place objects in a scene. So how do we generate these points? The simplest implementation would be to keep picking random points, and for each new point, look at the distances to all the existing points. If the new point is within the radius of any of them, simply discard it and try again. This is really inefficient though, so to speed things up, we're going to create a grid where the diagonal length of each cell is equal to the radius that we want to maintain around each point. This means that no matter where the point is inside the cell, its radius is guaranteed to cover the entirety of that cell. This is important because it means that there's only space for a single point inside each cell. We can also see that no matter where the point is, its radius cannot extend past this 5x5 block of cells around it. So that means that instead of looking at a new point's distance from all existing points, like I showed earlier, we only need to look at the points that lie inside this 5x5 block of cells. Okay, let's get started. So in Unity, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script called Poisson Disk Sampling. And I'll open that up. I'm going to make this a static class, so I'll need to get rid of all of this monobehavior stuff. And instead I'm going to have a public static method returning a list of vector twos. I'll call this something like generate points. And for the parameters, we're going to want a float for the radius and a vector two for the size of the region that we're sampling the points from. So I'll just call this the sample region size. All right, now, first thing I want to do is calculate the size of the cells of the grid. So if this here is one of the cells, remember that we want the diagonal to be equal to the radius. And I'll just label the two sides uh, as s. So we know the radius, that's the value that we're being given in our function, and we want to calculate s. So we know from Pythagoras that in a right angle triangle, r squared is equal to the sum of the two sides, both squared. So we can just write that as r squared is equal to 2s squared. And we're trying to solve for s, so let's divide both sides by 2 to get s squared is equal to r squared divided by 2. And now we can just take the square root of both sides to get s is equal to the square root of r squared over 2, or slightly simplified, s is equal to r divided by the square root of 2. So in the generate points method, I'll say float cell size is equal to the radius divided by mathf.square root of 2. Okay, next I'm going to create a 2D array of integers for the grid, and here we're going to need to know uh, how many cells there are on the x and y axes. So this will just be the number of times that the cell size fits into the sample region size. So I can just divide sample region size dot x divided by the cell size and sample region size dot y divided by the cell size. And I want to round those both up to integers. So I'll use the mathf dot seal to int function like so. All right, then I'm going to have a list of vector twos to hold all of the points that we generate. So I'll set that equal to a new list of vector twos. So what this grid is going to do is it will tell us for each cell what the index of the point in the points list is that lies in that cell. Now I say index, but since our grid starts out initialized to all zeros, I'm actually going to say that zero means that there's no point in that cell. And then one means that it's the point with an index of zero, two means it's point with an index of one and so on. All right, now I'm going to need a second list of vector twos, and this is going to be what I'll call the spawn points. So the idea is that when we add a new point to the points list, we're also going to add it as a new spawn point, and then we're going to try add future points around that spawn point. If we've tried a bunch of times and we can't find anywhere to fit a new point around that spawn point, then we'll remove it from the spawn points list. So to get things started off, I'm just going to add a starting point as our spawn point. So I'll say spawn points dot add, and this can be a point anywhere inside of the sample region. 
but I'll just add it in the middle, so sample region size divided by 2. Alright, now we'll do a loop while the spawn points list is not empty, so while the count is greater than 0, we want to pick a random spawn point, so I'll say int spawn index is equal to random.range between 0 and spawn points dot count, and then I'll say vector2 spawn center is equal to spawn points with an index of that spawn index. Now, as I was saying earlier, we want to try a bunch of times to spawn a new point somewhere around the spawn center, and if we fail to find a place to put the new point, then we're going to remove this spawn point from the list. But, of course, the question is, how many times should we try before we reject the spawn point? And for that, I'm actually just going to make it a, another parameter of the function. I'll have an int num samples before rejection, and I'll give that a default value of 30. So obviously one can speed up the algorithm by reducing that number, but then uh, the points run the risk of not being as tightly packed. All right, so here we're going to have a loop for int i equal to 0, i less than num samples before rejection, i plus plus, and here we want to pick a random direction. So I'll start by uh, creating a random angle. So this is going to be equal to random.value, which is a random number between 0 and 1, and I'll multiply that by mathf.pi multiplied by 2. So in radians, that gives us any possible angle. And then we can create a vector2 direction equal to a new vector2, and we'll have the sine of the angle on the x-axis and the cosine of the angle on the y-axis. All right, now we're going to create a vector2 for our candidate point. This is equal to the spawn center plus the direction multiplied by random dot range between the radius and two times the radius. So the reason we have the radius as the minimum value is so that uh, we guarantee that we're spawning the candidate outside of the point that's already at the spawn center. All right, now we want to figure out whether or not to accept this candidate point. So I'm going to say if, and I'm now going to call a method that we haven't created yet called isValid, and I'll pass in the candidate point. And if that's true, then we want to add the candidate point to the points list. We also want to add it as a new spawn point. And then uh, we want to record which cell it ends up in. So let's say grid, and then on the x-axis, this will be candidate.x divided by the cell size. And we're going to need to cast this to an integer. And we'll do the same thing for the y-axis cast to an integer candidate.y divided by the cell size. And we'll be setting the grid at that sort of cell location equal to the index of the point, so points.count, remembering again that this is the one-based index, not the zero-based index. All right, so now that our candidate has been accepted, we can break out of the loop and then uh, outside of this loop, we want to say that if no candidate was accepted, then remove the spawn point from the spawn points list. So in order to know whether or not a point was accepted, we're going to need to create a bool up here. I'm going to call this candidate accepted, the default value of false. And now uh, if we have a valid candidate point, I'll set candidate accepted equal to true. And then outside of the loop, we can say if no candidate was accepted, then spawn points dot remove at spawn index. All right, then at the end of all of this, we can just return the points list. Now, all that remains for us to do is implement this is valid method. So let's come down here static bool is valid, taking in a vector2 for the candidate point, and then it's going to need a bunch of other things as well. Uh, we want to know the 
sample region size as well as the cell size and we also need access to the points list and also the uh, 2D integer array that is the grid. Alright, now the first thing I want to check is that the candidate point actually lies within the sample region. So I'll say if candidate.x is greater than or equal to zero and candidate.x is less than the sample region size.x and then same thing for the y-axis, candidate.y greater than or equal to zero and candidate.y less than sample region size dot y. Uh, so if that's all true, then it is inside the sample region. Otherwise, I'm just going to return false immediately because it's not a valid point. Then what I'd like to do in here is figure out which cell the candidate point lies in so that we can search the surrounding cells. So I'll have int cell x is equal to cast to an int candidate.x divided by cell size and then same thing for cell y this is equal to int candidate.y divided by cell size all right now in order to search this 5x5 five five block around the cell we'll need to start on the x-axis two cells to the left and end two cells to the right so I'll create an int search start x this is equal to cell x minus 2 but now we have to make sure that this doesn't go out of bounds of our grid so I'll set this equal to whatever is larger between 0 and cell x minus 2 so it can never go below 0 and then I'll have an int search end x which is equal to whatever is smaller between cell x plus 2 and the number of cells on the x-axis of the grid minus 1 so grid.getLength with an index of 0, minus 1. All right, now I'm just going to copy-paste this for the y-axis. So I'll call this search start y and search end y. Replace cell x with cell y. And get length 0 with get length 1. All right, I'm now going to need two for loops to loop over this block of cells. So I'll have 4 int x equal to search start x, while x is less than or equal to search end x. I'll increment x by 1. And then same thing for the y-axis, 4 int y equal to search start y, y less than or equal to search end y, y plus plus. We can then get the index of the point in that cell. So we'll call this int point index is equal to grid x comma y minus 1. So if the point index is equal to negative 1, that means there's no point in that cell. So let's do a check for that. I'll say if point index is not equal to negative 1, then I want to find the distance between the candidate point and that point. So I'll say float distance is equal to candidate minus the point in the points list with that index and get the magnitude of that vector. Now I'll test if this is less than the radius, so if distance is less than radius, and I'm just going to add the radius as a parameter to the function here. Could calculate it from the cell size, but anyway. Um, if that's the case, then the candidate is too close to the point, and we're going to return false. And if we get through uh, this entire block of cells, and we haven't been too close to any of the points, then we can return true. All right, then just as a little optimization, getting the square magnitude is cheaper than getting the magnitude, so I'll just rename this to square distance and compare it to the squared radius. All right, so now we just need to uh, pass all of the correct arguments here into the isValid function. So it needs the sample region size, it wants the cell size, the radius, the list of points, and the grid. All right, so the algorithm should be working now. All that remains is to test it. So to do that, I'm going to go into Unity, create a new c -sharp script. I'll just call this test. And I'll create a empty game object to assign that to. All right, I'm going to open that up. And in here, I'm going to have a 
public float radius. I'll set that to 1. A public vector 2 for the uh, region size. I'll set that equal to uh, vector 2.1 by default. And then a public int rejection samples, which I'll set to 30. And then we're going to want a list of vector 2s for the points. And then I'm going to have a on validate method. So this is called uh, when values are changed in the inspector and some other times as well, but that's the main reason we're interested in it. So here I'll just say that points is equal to pass on disk sampling dot generate points and I'll pass in the radius, the region size, and the rejection samples. All right, now to visualize this, I'm going to have an on draw gizmos method. And here I'll say that if the points list is not equal to null, then I want to loop over it. So for each vector to point in the points list, I'm going to draw a sphere there. So gizmos.drawsphere at point. And instead of actually using the radius, I'm going to have a separate value called the display radius. And I'll just create that over here, public float display radius. I'll set that to 1 by default as well. I'd also just like to draw this region size. So back in undraw gizmos, I'll say gizmos.draw wire cube, uh, passing in region size over 2 as the center, and region size as the size. All right, I'll save that, go back into Unity and wait for this com uh, to compile. And once it does, I'm going to go into 2D mode here, and I'm just going to disable the camera and the directional light because those are kind of getting in the way. And uh, let me turn that stuff off. So now we should be able to increase the region size and see our points filling it up. Now, in order for these points to be valid, the center of each point mustn't be inside the radius of any of the other points. But that's a little difficult to see. So what I'll do is I'll halve the display radius, and then we can tell that it's valid just because none of the radii overlap each other. All right, so I can now uh, increase this even more. Can get a nice bunch of points here, and we can decrease the display radius to just see how that looks as a sort of field of points, and I think the distribution looks very nice. We can also try reducing the rejection samples, and as I said, this will make the algorithm run faster, but it may result in points that are less tightly packed, and you can see if we get really low, we might even end up with some huge empty areas, so you can uh, play with that depending on your needs. All right, that is everything for this episode. In the next video, we're going to look at supporting uh, points with different radii. So until then, cheers.